Well, hello, Slate Church. We're so glad to have you guys hello, joining hello. us here today. My name is Nate. I'm on the leadership team here at Slate Church. And I am Ben, also on the leadership team here at Slate. We get to work together. Yeah, it's pretty great. It's Super pretty fun. fun. Our desks are right beside each other. Two meters apart. It's two meters apart, yes, of course. But like, they're next to each other. Pastor Ben's always doing like nice quiet work, working with spreadsheets. I'm always annoying him, asking him questions. It's great, it's a fun time. That's not wrong. <laughs> All right, well, hey. But he's great. We are in our Full Send series right Welcome. now. Uh, Welcome. Yeah, it's going to be great. We're in our Full Send series, so we decided that we were going to fully send this pre-roll this morning, yeah. um, uh, today. So we're going to be uh, uh, we're gonna be doing some trivia, and we're going to be partaking in some hot sauces. Let's so go. what do we have here? So we have... What is that? This Tell me. is blueberry plague. I don't. I have never tried these two hot sauces. Sriracha classic. We have blueberry plague here. It is blueberry with scorpion peppers. That sounds fun. I, is that a real pepper? That sounds fake. It does sound fake. I have no idea. You brought these. I don't know. Scotch bonnet, pepper sauce. I don't know what's in this one, but it has four out of five flames for hotness. Whatever that means. And just some classic sriracha, because we're going to start it off light. So we're going to go sriracha, blueberry plague, scotch bonnet, all right. as you make mistakes answering questions. Does that sound all right? It sounds all right, but I don't make mistakes answering questions. Yeah. You know, why don't you just tell the people about your resume really quickly before we start? So this is this is a Bible trivia. So we, I will say back in my younger days, in like high school, there was this thing in the Mennonite conference called Bible quizzing. Every year, we focused on a book and we literally, you competed against other teams and you had buzzers and it was a whole thing. I got quizzer of the year one year. Come on, I think quizzer we were in the book of, of Samuel. The, I'm in the presence of a quizzer of the- Yes, thank no, you. There's wait. applause in the studio. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, but I, I, I it was only on the book of Samuel, so I don't know how well I'm going to do on the rest One of my questions is on the book of Samuel, Yay. so I'm a little bit worried here, guys. A little worried. All right, let's get started. We don't got we a go. lot of time left. You, do you want to ask the first question? Sure. Okay. I'll start super easy. Yeah. Who was the first king of Israel? David. No. Oh. So, <laughs> no. Oh, my gosh. No. <laughs> okay. We're starting off quick. I'm sorry. I thought that might be the easy one. All right, so, Sriracha, down the hatch. How's it feel? A little spicy? <laughs> All right, what do you got for me? How many books are in the New Testament, Ben? Oh, gosh. Can I sing them out and then count them while I do it? <laughs> Go ahead. I have no idea how many there are. I could recite them all, but I don't know how many there are. We don't have time for me to recite them just all. Eat the, just eat the, there's 27, Twi just eat the chicken. You didn't even let me guess. All right, that's fair. How's that tasting? How's that going down? You're fine. You, you like spice. All right, I do, me. I really do. All right, what's my next question here? All right, I've been reading Revelation. Also, <laughs> this is a lot of chicken. This is maybe not a good idea. Yeah, it's a lot of chicken. Excuse me for talking with my mouthful. Reading Revelation. What is the last set of plagues? I'm going to give you multiple choice. Was it the seven bowls, seven seals, seven trumpets, or seven horses? The last set. Trumpets? Sorry, seven bowls. So, seven bowls. You look like a Eat. bad pastor. All right. I don't know who else knows that either, but we don't have actually much time left. So if you're just joining us, welcome to week one of our Full Send series. We are eating very hot chicken wings. And All right. if we get to the end of this, we're just going to down them. Yeah, okay, we just got to down them, but let's say, what else do people need to know? Yes. Um, make yourself known in the chat. Say hello. We'd say love hello. to chat with you. We'd love to chat with you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Fill out eat, a connect eat that, card. Eat that, eat one, eat one. Fill out a connect card. If you have not already yet, we would love to get it's to know great. you and chat with you. It's awesome. Lean into worship. It's going to be great today. Oh my gosh. I'm like sweating everywhere. Okay. Invite a friend. Invite a friend to church. There's a link that's going to come up. To do... Oh, okay. Hey, cheers. Wait, no, that's not, that's not COVID safe. All right, here, cheers. Okay. Think it, think it. Let's go to church.
Welcome to Slay Church. We're so excited that you decided to tune in today. Right now, a connect card is popping up in the chat. Why don't you fill that out? Because we really want to get connected with you. So fill that out. You can also throw your name in the chat, throw where you're from. Our online host team would love to get to know you. Well, church, we're about to head into worship and we're about to sing a really fun song that says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You know, I would love for you to get off of your feet as we worship together. Hey. today. Come on, why don't you put your hands together, tap your leg. We're going to sing this song. We're going to sing this bridge. It talks about the freedom that we have in Christ. Come on. Chain the fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. And lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus. Come on, lift your voice and sing. Chains will fall. Chains will fall. And shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole and hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Yeah, it's free. 
listen, so glad to worship with you today, church. And we're going to continue in our worship right now when it comes to our giving. You know, in Matthew 14, we see this really familiar story where Jesus is with his disciples and he's teaching the crowds of people and evening comes. And how many of you know that when evening comes, you get a little bit hungry, right? And the disciples are like, these people are hungry. We need to send them home. We need to let them go buy some food. And Jesus says, don't send them away. What do we have here? The disciples go, we just have these five loaves. We have these two fish. We don't have enough. And they give them to Jesus. This is the substantial part of this. Catch this right here. They give them to Jesus. Jesus takes them, thanks his father for them, blesses them and gives them back and says, you give them out to the disciples. The disciples go ahead and spread it out. And, and, and maybe you're familiar with this and you know that every single person, the thousands and thousands and thousands of people there were fed. That's the amazing thing, church, when we give to Jesus, when we give to God, when we are committed in our giving back to him, that's the amazing thing is that God takes it, he receives it. And then he actually asks us as the church to work it out, to walk it out. He puts it back in our hands. And that's what we get to be a part of in this moment. So if you haven't given to, to Slate Church financially before, if that's not a commitment you've made, but you call Slate Church home, I just want to encourage you to get giving today because there is so much blessing in that and it's an incredible privilege to actually be a part of that. So there's a lot of different ways you can give. You can check them out online at slatechurch.com slash give. Make sure that you're doing that. And I'm just going to pray right now as we give. Jesus, I thank you that we get to give to you and you are so gracious and generous that you give back to us and we get to walk that out. I pray you would bless every gift that comes in today, no matter how big, how small. God, it doesn't matter. You work in miraculous ways and we thank you for that. In your name, amen. Amen. Well, you might remember a little bit ago that we had our Revival Rumblings series. And in that series, we uh, launched a song called Revival Rumblings that was uh, that was uh, written here in-house. And it's been incredible. I've been singing in my kitchen for a couple of months. Well, listen, my kids don't just have to, to hear my terrible singing voice anymore as I'm singing that song because Revival Rumblings is now streaming on all platforms. You can go, you can download it, you can check it out and make sure you are doing that. It's amazing. It's exciting. While you're at it, why don't you follow us on social media at Slate Church, at Slate Church Online. Know what's coming up. Have, a, have a, an ear to the ground. Know what's going on here at Slate Church. Listen, we're headed into our Full Send series. This is week one of Full Send, just being committed fully into what God has for us. We had a chance to sit down this week with someone named Katrina, and I'm excited for you to hear her uh, Full Send story. So why don't you check this out? My faith journey looks a little bit different than I think what I typically hear in, um, you know, talking to people in my church community. Uh, I actually didn't grow up in a Christian family and faith just wasn't a part of my life for, um, you know, my childhood, most of my teenager years. Um, and really it was until I came to university, uh, you know, that I really started diving into what faith is, what faith looks like. So all throughout high school, uh, I just had no interest in religion and nobody in my family did so I had no reason to push to look. Um, but what happened uh, throughout those years was I really struggled with a lack of identity. Um, I used to be a competitive swimmer and when I stopped that I just had nothing driving um, my identity and I, I felt really lost. So I ended up putting a lot of my identity in school, a lot of my identity in other people um, and that was really unhealthy because people change and you can't always rely on you know succeeding in school to drive your identity so when i came to university uh, i was i was pretty scared i was in a pretty weird place in my life um, i was in a terrible relationship um, i had had a bit of a messy end to uh, my time back home and uh, i was a little bit nervous because the only person who i technically knew in the city was my roommate who I had never met before and all I knew about her was that she was a huge Christian, um, to put it that way. And uh, that made me nervous because I didn't really know what to expect. I had never really met a Christian person in my life who really talked about their faith. Um, but the moment I got there, uh, all of my worries were put to rest because she was amazing. She was so nice. She was not pushy. She didn't judge me and that was just so counter to what I thought she would be like. So. 
Um, fast forward a couple of months, I, I was really unsure of where to go. I kind of felt like I was at a crossroads. Um, I think university is such an interesting place for people who are struggling with their identity because they can really go one of two ways. I think university puts a lot of pressure on you um, to party and to date and to take advantage of your youth, which um, often is something that takes away from your faith. Uh, but I was really lucky because I was surrounded by um, my roommate again and her friends who were all Christian and they really pushed me to try going to church. Um, and I was in a pretty bad place when I first went, but it was like the moment I went, um, something shifted for me. Uh, I remember my first sermon that I saw was Pastor Brandon preaching about Zacchaeus. Um, and I just thought that was so interesting because Zacchaeus' story, you know, he is surrounded by a crowd of people who want to see Jesus and he feels out of place. And the first time that I went to church, um, I felt like I had no place there and I was surrounded by believers and I didn't know why I was there. Um, but I think in that moment, just like in the Bible, when we see Jesus call out directly to Zacchaeus, I think God was calling right out to me. And um, from that moment, I just knew that I had found something different. Um, all the places I had looked to put my identity had never given me a feeling like that. Um, and so I kept going out. I kept, you know, seeing what this was all about. And I was amazed by um, the community at Slate, who was just so encouraging, um, non-judgmental, and they really just wanted to get to know me. They weren't concerned about what my background was or where I came from. Um, and eventually, uh, I felt like I had enough curiosity and I was ready, and I put my hand up to say I wanted to follow Jesus. And from that point on, I really dove into the Bible. Um, I just started a Bible in the year plan, and I just dove right in, and I, uh, I started going to services regularly. I went out to a couple of team nights back when we could do those. Um, and I was just amazed. I, I really felt like it had been a turning point for me. And eventually I got plugged in with an amazing connect group and I joined host team, which has just been one of the best experiences. Um, I think when I joined both those things, I was at a point where I didn't feel ready to join them. Um, but something was pushing me. God's voice told me that that was where I needed to be. So I just, I tried it out and I found an amazing connect group filled with other post-secondary students who kind of had similar experiences to me. They felt lost, but instead of letting university derail them from their faith, they decided to push in. Um, and that was, that was amazing. And um, getting involved in a team allowed me to learn what serving God looks like um, because I had never experienced that before. And um, I think what was really cool is that I dove into those experiences before I felt ready. And what I've noticed since then is that God pushes me to do things before I feel ready. Um, I actually now lead the connect group that I first joined. I am a team captain on the team that I joined when I joined host. Um, and those were not experiences I necessarily felt equipped for, but God said, no, you go and I'll take care of the rest. And I think those experiences have taught me a lot about trusting him. I think as a student, it's really easy to um, put a lot of, you know, your I guess effort towards school and a lot, you know, you really have to work and strive to get good grades and that can be um, a lot of pressure. And I think growing up, um, especially during high school, I felt that uh, if I didn't work hard, I wasn't gonna succeed. And I felt, you know, I really fell into the whole idea of the hustle culture that I think we still see. I felt like I had to be always studying, always working hard and always getting the grades that I wanted. Um, and something that's shifted, I think, since having a relationship with Jesus is just that we don't always have to work so hard because a lot of um, what we do, we can trust that he's gonna help us do it. Um, I think that really is apparent in uh, the co-op process that I'm in as a co-op student at Waterloo. Um, you know, a lot of people are applying to you know, tens and twenties of jobs and they're stressed about interviews and though I feel some of that pressure, I think as a student I can take heart that God has a plan for the degree he has me in, he has a plan for the job that I'm going to be in and I can really trust that he's going to help me um, throughout that whole process. I can give up my co-op term to him and I can give up um, some of the pressure of school to him and I can just trust that as long as I'm putting in, you know, a good amount of effort, uh, he can handle the rest and he can help me. Uh, get through, get through it all. As the spirit was moving over the waters, the spirit. Comes
come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the waters, Spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us. So come down, Spirit. Wonder Church, is that your prayer today? You know, this this idea that Holy Spirit, you are all I want. 
You're all I want in my situation. Whatever it is that you're facing, whatever you're going through, no matter how big or how small, whatever you're thanking God for, I encourage you today, thank Him filled with the Spirit. As we continue to worship, we're gonna take a moment just to thank God and to also pray for some of the needs right here in Slate Church. You know, we're thanking God that someone was uh, able to have some amazing people come alongside them in this season. Someone's thankful that they were unharmed after a car accident. Someone is thankful for provision at the exact moment that they needed it. I love that so much. Someone is thankful for a smooth transition as they moved homes. Someone's thankful that they were able to celebrate graduation from university with family. There is a lot to be thankful for, no matter what season we find ourselves in. But you know, there's a lot that we also need to recognize people are praying for in this community, in this church. And we can't go at this without the Holy Spirit. I hope that you know that, that we, we can attempt things in our own strength but it is going to be futile. So we're gonna pray over these today, but we're not gonna pray just as, as those who have no faith. We are gonna pray as those filled with faith, filled with the spirit today. We're praying that someone will be able to find an apartment. We're praying for someone's grandpa whose health is declining. We're praying for someone's friend who is struggling with self-worth. We're praying for Canada's indigenous community and of course Canada as a whole after the 215 children who were discovered at the residential school in Kamloops, we are praying over the injustices there. We are praying for someone who is anxious about having a hard conversation, praying for someone's friend that they would come back to Jesus. We're praying for the leaders in Ontario as they are making decisions right now. We are praying for a lot of things today, church, and we're praying for you as well. Maybe you have a need of your own right now that wasn't read out. I just wanna encourage you, why don't you just raise a hand towards the screen right now, and I just wanna include you in this prayer. Jesus, we ask that you would move. Holy Spirit, you are all we want in these situations, God. So often we pick it up, we put it on our shoulders, we carry these things around, these burdens around as though somehow we have to figure it out and you are just gonna help us along the way, God. No, today we say, God, you are the leader in this, Lord. We are gonna release this to you, God. We can't figure these things out on our own and so we're not even going to try. We are going to depend on you today and we are going to cry out that we need you, Holy Spirit. So we pray this in your name. And everyone said, amen, amen. Why don't you continue to lean in and worship here, church? Come on, Slate Church, why don't you lift up your voice right now in your own words and start to sing out to God.
come on, come on. What an incredible time worshiping here today, church. And listen, we are moving into our message portion of our series here, and the team has prepared a video to launch us into that. And so wherever you are, why don't you turn your eyes to that? Super excited for this today. Slate Church, it's so good to see you. If I haven't met you before, my name is Brandon. I lead pastor of this church. Along, I'm the lead pastor of this church alongside my wife, Emma. And it's so good to have you. What a great intro we had. Thank you to our creative team. Uh, and a special shout out to Mel Wiersma uh, just for putting that together. Um, that gets me excited about these next three weeks that we're going to share together in a series called Full send. Now, full send is just this idea of being completely committed and all in on life in all these various aspects. And uh, usually it's tied to extreme sports or that sort of thing. Um, but for us today, it's all about this idea of being completely committed to where God has called us as individuals and as uh, where God has called us as a church. And over the next three weeks, we're going to find ourselves in the story of Joshua. Joshua is this uh, incredible figure within Scripture. Um, and uh, we're going to find them in, uh, in ourselves in the book of Joshua, from Joshua 1 to chapter 4. And in that, we're going to actually find ourselves uh, looking over the things that allow Joshua to be fully committed, completely committed to all that God had called him and the nation of Israel to. You see, where we find ourselves in the book of Joshua, we actually find ourselves at the end of a very, very long journey for the Israelites. A journey that started with a guy named Abraham. God saw something in Abraham that he actually decided to choose uh, Abraham and his lineage, the family that would come out of Abraham, to actually bring about Jesus Christ. But there were some hiccups along the way, and that's, an, that's a really minor way of putting uh, some very serious things. Because through Abraham, his, uh, his family began to grow. And as it began to grow, they, they became threat. Uh, a threat to the, uh, the Egyptian empire. The Egyptian empire actually enslaved the Israelites for about 400 years. And after 400 years, a guy named Moses came along. And Moses led the Israelites out of slavery with the hand of God. And uh, after leading them out of the hands of slavery, um, Moses led them to this place that they called the Promised Land. Now, the Promised Land was the land that God promised Abraham way back here that he would give to his family that was non-existent. And now here you have a really large family, a really large family called the Israelites, the nation of Israelites, and they're very nomadic, and they've reached the promised land. Well, something happens as they reach the promised land, and it's that they sent in a bunch of spies, and the spies came back with an unfavorable report. And rather than listening to the voice of God, they listened to the voice of man. Um, and, 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 and that's a, just a lesson in and of itself. They listened to the voice of man. And so rather than entering into the promised land there, they actually go into another um, another waiting period, not a 400-year waiting for period this time, but a 40-year waiting period where they wander the desert. And as they wander the desert, uh, they go through a whole bunch of tribulations and trials and things like that. And then they find themselves once again at the precipice of the, pro uh, uh, of the promised land at the hands not of Moses, who led them out of slavery, but Joshua, who is about to lead them into freedom. You see, there's one way to lead people out of slavery, but then you also need to lead people into freedom. And that's the, that's the task that Joshua takes on. I'm going to pray just really quick, and then we're going to get into it. Jesus, thank you that we get to gather here to, together today. Thank you for this new series, this collection of talks that we're um, going to be talking through over the next three weeks called Full Send. God, I pray that we'd be able to move from a conditional commitment to complete commitment, God, when it comes to following you. We pray this in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Well, guys, I've been off for the last five weeks, and uh, I'm coming back, and I'm really excited about all that God is, um, is doing in our church, and I'm really expectant 
of where he's taking us. Now, after five weeks, I wanted to reflect and kick off the full sense series with this idea of being completely committed. And I wanted to use the story of uh, Joshua because here Joshua is, this really young leader, and uh, he's about to cross the Jordan River into the Promised Land. And the Jordan River was a fast-moving river, okay? It's this river that you couldn't actually cross unless it was a low tide where the, the water had uh, somewhat drained and you could walk through. Or you could find these uh, areas in the, in the Jordan River called fjords where you could actually walk through. Um, and wade through. But you're about to take an entire nation across a river where even a fjord would be not be enough for an entire nation. A lot of people would be swept away and would eventually drown. In fact, most would. Um, we have women, we have children, and we have men that are going to be able to cro- are going to be crossing over. They have a lot of equipment that they had built out in the desert that they needed to cross over with. And so they couldn't just find a fjord. They couldn't just make a way on their own. They couldn't just, um, you know, take the easier way around um, because there was no way around the Jordan River into the promised land that God had for them. And so Joshua is standing on the precipice of crossing over into the promised land. He's standing on the Jordan, and he gives the nation of Israel confidence that they're going to move forward. In uh, Joshua chapter 3, verse 5, Joshua tells the people, he says, consecrate yourself, get yourself ready before God, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things through you. A short way of saying he's going to allow us to cross over this river, and you need to just prepare yourselves. See, this kind of confidence and move past an Un, a, an unimaginable uh, barrier into the land that God has called them is exactly where we find ourselves as a church today. Now, I'm not trying to say that I'm Joshua. I'm not trying to say that our church are the Israelites, but we can pull some lessons about the faithfulness before God that will allow us to completely commit to where God is calling us. See, I want to talk a little bit about where God's, what God's been showing me during these last five weeks that I had off to sort some things internally. You know, I went into those five weeks, um, actually at, at, at the best place I had been in a really long time. Uh, in fact, uh, 2020 was, was the hardest year of my life, personally. It was, um, I'm not going to get into all the details. Eventually, I'll share even more about that. But it was the hardest year of my life. And I was actually finding myself, right before those five weeks off, Actually, at the best place I'd been in a really long time. And so it was actually a really cool experience to take these five weeks at the recommendation of uh, our, our overseers, the people that actually lead me here at Slate Church. Our overseers are just a group of pastors that actually um, provide direction and mentorship to Emma and I. And at uh, the recommendation of our overseers, I took these five weeks. And it was a really interesting time because here I am going into a five-week time off, really uh, quite healthy, and then finding myself having some deep realizations about what God had wanted to do in me and in our church when I came back in order for us to get to the place that he's taking us. See, today's message is titled, I'm so sick of online church. So this past season has been a difficult one. I chose this passage because the Israelites have also just been through their really own difficult season. What should have been an 11-day journey into the promised land turned into a 40-year wandering in the desert because they didn't have the trust that God could bring them into where they wanted to be. And in that wandering, they tested God. They, they, um, they, 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 they um, uh, uh, disappointed God. They, um, they, 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 they disobeyed God. They, they had all these experiences, and it left them exhausted, just wandering for 40 years anywhere is exhausting. But to wander 40 years in the desert is really exhausting. In fact, in the desert, they lost a lot of things. In fact, there would only be two people that would cross over into the promised land that were there 40 years later as they were looking at the promised land and sending spies in. There would only be two people out of that entire group, not even Moses, would actually see themselves cross over to the promised land. The only people still alive after those 40 years that weren't born in the desert were two people. And one of them was Joshua. See, they had their own very difficult season and their own very difficult thing that they had to get through. And I can't imagine what it would have been like 40 years. And so when I talk about something like COVID, it can, I can, I can, I, I, it can, I can be a little, I don't know if the word's coy, but like it can be a little bit like, I don't, I don't know, like 40 years is, and yet when I look at COVID and what the last year and a half has brought, we've, we've experienced a lot of loss. 
saying, I'm not just tired of online church. I, I, I'm just tired of the place that we find ourselves in. And I'm tired of hearing stories of mental health decline and, and backups of surgeries. And you know, I'm, I'm honestly just a little bothered that I couldn't buy my, my kids' underwear at one point uh, during this pandemic. And I know for a lot of us, it doesn't just go into what we're seeing in society. It hits a little bit closer to home with what we're doing right now. And some of us are just so tired of what's happening. Now, I know this isn't the heart of everybody that I'm talking to right now, but I've heard, of all, heard it all. That online church, oh, it's just not the same. We're not together. And, 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 and we can't worship together and that sort of thing. And, and uh, you know, I, I've heard it. And, 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 you know, well, like, how are we doing as a church? Like, I heard so-and-so left and, and that sort of thing. I heard um, that, that from, from, uh, from a few different people throughout this year and a half, and, uh, or, or at least through other people, oh, yeah, there's the sound quality. It's just not quite what, and it, I just can't watch it because of the sound quality and, and all of this different stuff. And listen, I'm only bringing it up because, listen, uh, it's not the majority of the things that I'm hearing. But I know that for a lot of this, this isn't what we want out of church, you know. Uh, for some of us, um, we're like, hey, this is great. You know, I can, I can bend it to, to my lifestyle and everything else. And I think that can be problematic as well and everything else. But I'm using this title, I'm so sick of online church, as a, as a launching pad for the fact that I don't believe that where we find ourselves right now is where God's going to actually take us into the future. I think that online church has actually been such a wonderful way to get a larger vision of what God wants to do in the province that so many of us live in. I believe that online church is already all of a sudden this opportunity, given us this opportunity to actually begin to launch in different areas and smaller towns that we would have never dreamt of. And I believe that Slate Church is going to see itself all over Ontario in a matter of time. But I also understand that it's becoming difficult to turn that on and gain hope and have hope in what we're moving towards. But what I want to encourage us to do today is to shift our perspective because sometimes the things that are causing us um, grief in moving forward into what God wants to have us, uh, ha have us move into are things that have stuck with us longer than online church. You know, sound has always been a, an easy out for a lot of people. You know, for a lot of people that are like, oh, you know, the sound just isn't where I'm at. I mean, this is the same thing we'd hear when we were in person, you know? Well, the, you know, the kids have been distracting us or not. It's so hard to actually tune into it. Well, listen, the, there was other distractions before that we'd hear about as well. You know, I don't actually think that it's online church that we're sick of. I think as humans, we have a really hard time just staying committed, believing the best, contributing where we can, speaking positively about what God's doing, and moving into the future that God has for us, because it's easier to complain than to commit fully and to get ourselves and, and just realize that, you know what, no matter what this looks like, I'm going to move forward in what God has for us. Now, I want to be clear, because this is coming out of a pastoral heart and not trying to bring down a hammer. If you uttered anything that I have said today, I'm not thinking about you. If you even told me uh, yourself, like, one of these things. Listen, I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to the heart that I have as well. That sometimes can say, well, because of this, I'm just, I'm not able to fully uh, enter into worship during this time. Or because my, my, my kids are arguing with one another, well, I'm just not getting the same experience with God. The thing is, is that it shouldn't be based on those things that we're willing to fully commit into what God has for us in this season or the next. I'm amazed by the church globally because it seems that no matter what format the church begins to gather in across the world, church continues to move on and march forward and the body of Christ continues to build. And in fact, some of the places where the church is exploding the most in Asia, Latin America, and places uh, within the continent of Africa, we see these places that in the most persecuted areas are the places where the church is growing the most. And what that leads me to believe is it's not the style of a church that matters, but it's the conviction of the church that God could actually use them. And that's what Joshua had as he comes out of a difficult season, and he's on the precipice of moving into the promised land. He sees, you see in Joshua, this conviction that God is going to take them to where God wants them to be. You see, I want to move from conditional commitment. God, I will, I will fully enter in when... We're not online. What in the world? That same heart exists when we are not online. God, I'm, I'll commit when 
um, uh, the, 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 uh, the distraction is gone, or I, I will commit when this happens. Let's move from conditional commitment to God to complete commitment with God, and I want to show you how Joshua did that. Joshua was a guy that was completely committed to God, no matter the circumstance, and one of the reasons that we know this is because back in Numbers chapter 14, 6 to 9, we learn that Joshua was one of the spies that went to go check out the promised land the first time with Moses. One of the two people that would enter the promised land during this time, and one of the 12 spies that went in to check the land. It says in chapter 6 of Numbers, it says Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, the second person, son of Jephaninan, Jephaninan, I didn't say that word right at all, Jephana, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes. See, the 12 spies, 10 of them, had given a really bad report to the Israelites. But here's two men that are completely, um, uh, uh, they're, 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 they're confused as to why 10 of them would bring back a terrible report when, when their perspective was different. They tore the clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we pass through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us only. Do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. See, Joshua had complete confidence to move through to the promised land because he had always had complete confidence not in himself and not in the Israelites but in God. He said, listen, we'll devour them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. I want to say this over our church today. Listen, no matter what comes up against us moving into the future, do not be afraid of it. Do not be afraid of a fourth wave. Oh my goodness, media outlets are already picking up on that. I go to the beach with my kids, and my kids are like, hey, Dad, come jump in the waves. And I'm like, whoa, wave, did you say wave? And I start, it's a trigger word. It's like, don't be afraid of another wave. Don't be afraid of what the enemy uh, could possibly take away. Don't be afraid of, 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 of being isolated anymore. Don't be afraid of these things because the Lord is with us. Let's not be afraid, but let's understand that with God, anything is possible. You see, in order to have complete commitment to what God wants to take us into, we have to understand that God is bigger than any circumstance we will find ourselves in. And if God is leading us, he will take us. He will protect us. He will lead us. He will show us. He will cover us. He will walk with us. He will be with us. And he will move with us into the future because that is the God that we serve. And Joshua knew it back then when he reported. And so as he stands after 40 years of wandering through the desert, nothing has shaken inside of himself because his confidence wasn't in his circumstances. His confidence was in God. Our confidence needs to be with God if we're going to move from conditional commitment with God to complete commitment because God doesn't change even though our circumstances do. Listen, if we flip-flop for the next little while because our government decides to go into lockdown, out of lockdown, whatever else, and I'm not, I am not um, by any means criticizing the government right now. I am absolutely not. We need to pray for them more than we criticize them. Listen, but if, if that's what we're in, we need to understand that God can still move. Because for some of us, we've forgotten that while we have become a little disenfranchised with spirituality and everything else, just because it doesn't feel the way we want it to feel, it's not in the format we want it to be, that's called conditional commitment. We need complete commitment. Complete commitment says, my neighbors still need Jesus. My boss still needs Jesus. The people around me still need Jesus. I still need Jesus. My kids still need to see me leading them towards Jesus. My kids still need to see an example of me, for, of me setting, uh, they need to see me setting an example for them following Jesus. Complete commitment says, regardless of the circumstances, whether I'm, whether I'm on the first round of going into the promised land, or I'm in the desert, or I'm on the second round of going into the, whatever it looks like, I am completely committed to declaring over my life that Jesus is Lord. I'm completely committed to declaring over my life that the Lord is with us, and to not be afraid of the circumstances around me. Why is Joshua so committed? 
because he's always been committed. Why is he so confident? Because his confidence doesn't come from himself. It comes from God. Why else? In Joshua chapter 3, can Joshua utter these words to the Israelites, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow, the Lord will do amazing things through you? Because Joshua talked to God. See, Joshua was Moses' aide, and he was around Moses all the time. And there's this interesting story in Exodus chapter 33, verse 7, and it says, Now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp, some distance away from the Israelites, right? Calling it the tent of meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp, and whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrances to their tents, watching until Moses entered into the tent. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they stood and they worshipped each at the entrance to their tent. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Well, that's great. That's great for Moses. What does this have to do with Joshua? Listen to this. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide Joshua, son of Nun, the same Joshua in our story, did not leave the tent. I got other things I could say, but I just want to go off on this for five minutes. Can I have five minutes before my closing prayer? But Joshua did not leave the tent. I want to be completely committed, church. I'm not talking to anybody in particular, but over the last five weeks, what I've realized is I want to be all in. I want to stop putting conditions on my commitment with God. If you do this, God. When you do this, God. Only if you do this, God. But, God, I, I want to stop putting conditions on my commitment with God, and I want to be fully committed. I, I don't want to leave the tent of the presence of God. I, I, I don't want to walk away. I don't want to quench the spirit anymore. I don't want to be the, the man who says that I'm following Jesus, but is listening to all of the other voices in this world more than his. I want to move in the direction of God. I want to stand on the pre precipice of the promised land, declaring a victory in Jesus' name, because I can hear the voice of God, and I'm not afraid to proclaim it to the people that I lead. Because I mean this is that sometimes we say things with our mouth that we're not believing in our hearts. And I think for some of us, the last year and a half and of saying, I'm so sick of online church, is an indication that before we went into the season, maybe we forgot that the gathering is so vitally important to our walk with God, but it's not the only thing that makes up the church of Jesus Christ. The government and the restrictions and everything else have taken away one aspect of our Christian faith, but it's not the only aspect. He has not taken away our ability to pray. He has not taken away, our, the government has not taken away our ability to meet with, meet with others on walks and, and, and have communion. The government has not taken away our ability to be in the presence of God. The government has not taken away our ability to speak words of life to our friends and neighbors and coworkers and family that need a hope in Jesus Christ. They have not taken all of that away. And so the moment we say that I'm sick of online church, we forget that it's only one aspect of church that has ever been taken away in this last season, and we're going to bet to get it back. But when we get it back, are we willing to say, regardless of what happens next, we're going to find ourselves daily as people of God, meeting with the presence of God, so that we're ready with whatever comes next. Guys, I'm done playing games. I'm done blaming the government for my lack of happiness. I'm done at blaming it, uh, the way and style I want to do church and why my spirit's not thriving. I'm done putting things on other, on, on other the things. I'm done having a conditional commitment with God, and I want to move to complete commitment where I say, God, regardless of what this world looks like, I'm following after you. God, whether I'm in chains or I am free, I have learned to be content with you, writes Paul. And that's what I want 
deep inside of me. Joshua, it says Moses. And Moses had to leave the tent. This isn't anything bad about Moses. Moses had to leave the tent. He had to leave the people. He had to go back and forth between the tent. Absolutely. But when you have the opportunity to stay in the tent of the presence of God, let's take it. Guys, if all we're doing through church is just creating some social club that we're excited to gather together with, now listen, I want to be very clear. Gathering is really important. It's really important. I'm really disappointed it's been taken away. And with that said, because I want you to know that I also can't wait to get in a room with people just worshiping God and just, it's important. It's spiritual. It's biblical. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I'm at this place and I'm realizing that a lot of the negative things that I've picked up of uh, over the last year and a half, and again, I want to just really be very clear. I don't use messages to speak to people. I will talk to them directly. So I'm not talking to anybody in particular. This is like a, this is a sense that you get as a pastor over time. I'm just tired of Zoom calls. I'm tired of team meetings over a Zoom room. I'm just tired of logging in and having these distractions. I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. And I'm realizing that, that the things that we're most tired about with COVID are the things that used to trip us up beforehand as well. Like not all of us were stoked to get to church every Sunday when it was in person. We had problems with other people that were there. There was that one person that we were a little sketched out by. There was that drummer that played too loud. There was the screens that didn't seem to keep up with whatever. There was the lights that seemed to catch me in the eye. Why do we need lights then? The, 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 the critical spirit doesn't change regardless of the format. What I'm trying to talk about right now is that we need to make decisions as people that call in the name of Jesus, that regardless of what we go through as the people of God, we will put our hope and our trust in God and that we will not have a conditional commitment towards him. We will have complete commitment. This has got to be a full send moment for all of us saying, you know what? I'm all in. Jesus, what do you want me to do? There's a rushing river before me. The promised land is on the other side. We've got some work to do and some battles to fight once we cross over into the promised land. But I'm full in. I'm all in. It's ready. I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm cle- completely committed. I'm not going to make excuses anymore. I'm going to analyze and allow the Holy Spirit to, to, to search me and to point out areas in me that I need to let go so that you can use me in building your church. I'm back. Five weeks later, just to say, I'm as committed as ever. I'm, I'm as committed as ever to you guys, more so to God, and, and completely committed to go and make disciples of all of Ontario because that's the call that God's not just placed on me, but that's the call he's placed on the church. Now listen, for those of you that maybe you're listening in today and you're like, hey, I want to make a decision to follow Jesus. Maybe you're coming to that realization and you don't have those words for it until I said it, but you're going, I, I, need, I need that. Regardless of what is going around in me, I need peace inside of me. See, one of the things that I think is, is, is a little sad is that there's a lot of people that have walked through this whole pandemic season without God. And I want to make sure that if you're on the other side of this and you're going, I I don't want to walk another day without, I want to give you the opportunity to make a decision to follow Jesus. It doesn't mean your circumstance change. All of us, as people that have been believing in Jesus, we walk through the pandemic as well, but we get to walk through with the presence of God with us and for us. If you want to make that decision, I just ask that you'd raise your hand or click that button if you're watching live that's popped up in the chat that says, raise my hand. I want you to just do that as an outward action of what's happening inwardly. I want to pray for you. Jesus, for everyone that's raising their hand right now, I pray that you would show them that you are God. That your Holy Spirit would come into them, fill them, remind them, Lord, that God, you, that you are in control. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Congratulations on making that decision. Somebody will be back up in just a moment to give you more instructions. But I want to ask the rest of you, before we move any further, maybe you've had some conditional commitments in your life and you're going, hey, like, I've been struggling like anybody else. That's fine. Guys, like, I had five weeks and I, I actually sorted this and I, like, I'm not, this isn't for, 
This isn't me talking to anybody but myself. And I believe it's what God wanted me to bring. But if you're going, hey, I need to cross this. This crossing over isn't as much what needs to happen outside of me, but it's something that needs to happen inside of me. I need to go from conditional commitment to complete commitment. If that's you, I want to pray with you. Jesus, I pray for everybody. And if that's you, why don't you just stand to your feet, wherever you find yourself right now in your living room, as long as you're not driving, just stand to your feet and raise your hands and make a statement right now. Stop worrying. The first step to doing this is stop worrying about what people around you are thinking and saying, I'm only, I, I, I care more about what God is doing in me right now. Stand up. Let's begin to stand, uh, stand for, for, with God. Jesus, we pray that we would move from conditional commitment to complete commitment and that in that commitment that we would actually be moving forward in the direction that you've called us. God, there are ample reasons to be concerned about what our world is going through. And, and, and there are concerning things happening. But God, as the people of God, we want to put our trust in you and believe that no matter what you've called us to, that no matter what you're calling me to in the moment, that no matter what you want me to do as a child of God, that I can put my trust in you, that you are with us, that you are with me, and that I can move in the direction that you're calling me to, because it's not conditional upon what's happening around me, but it's actually more uh, determined upon what you're doing inside of me. And so God, I pray right now that you would be with us, that you would remind us of your presence, and that you you would fill us up with the courage that we need to cross over into complete commitment with you. We pray this in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, 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 amen. Hey, listen, church, next week we have watch parties happening in Waterloo. Um, Elmira is working on a relaunch plan uh, for those. I'm really excited about that. And soon we've got some Locals Plus, uh, Locals Plus, which is... uh, 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 smaller groups of people that are going to be popping up in some different other areas of Ontario that we're going to be talking to you about. And eventually you guys will have watch parties as well, which I'm really excited about. We are headed in the right direction. The promised land, proverbial promised land is ahead of us. And over the next two weeks, full send, we're going to talk more about what it looks like to be all in on where God's calling us to. Let's worship God today. Once again, church. Yeah.
You know, this has been a significant service today, I think. You know, it's amazing to come together and worship God and start off this Full Send series leaning in. And you know, I think that we've done that today. And I'm, uh, uh, wherever you are right now in the chat, why don't you just thank Pastor Brandon? I don't know about you, but I have missed him and it is so good to have him back for this series. We're gonna be hearing a lot from him. So great. You know, we have some great things coming up for Full Send, it's gonna be awesome. So keep leaning into that. Hey, if you're new here, or you wanna know more about Slate Church, you wanna know how you can get involved, we have something coming up on June 27th called Socials at 12 p.m. So just mark your calendars right now. You'll get some more information about that as we go so that you can register for that. Go to slatechurch.com to find out more as well. And hey, maybe you're new and you wanna to talk to a pastor right afterwards. There's gonna be something popping up in the chat right now. You can get connected one-on-one -on -one there uh, with with one of the pastors here at Slade Church and ask some questions, whatever that looks like right now, the opportunity is open. But hey, I hope that you go into this week uh, excited for what is ahead. And we just pray that you go just fully, fully blessed here as well. Have a great week, Slade Church. Thank you.